Hello everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time represents the average amount of time you should be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. When the time is up, I'll be giving you an answer as well as a treatment. Good luck. 3, 2, 1. This card is infamous for tripping up my students, but it's not that difficult if you realize that the heart always follows certain rules. Let's take a look at this rhythm a little bit more closely to see if we can identify it. What I think confuses my students the most about this card is the fact that you have wide QRS complexes present. But what you have to realize is that's okay. This may be the result of an underlying bundle branch block. What should clue you in immediately though, that this isn't some sort of ventricular dysrhythmia, is the fact that there is no consistency anywhere to the R to R interval. When you're seeing something that is irregularly irregular, it's only one condition that it could be, and this is fibrillation. Now fibrillation can exist in either the atria or the ventricle. The difference between the two is the ability to conduct further down in the electrical system. What I mean by this is the ventricle is pretty much the end of the line. So fibrillation there is chaotic and unorganized. Fibrillation that occurs in the atria, however, still has the ability to use the electrical conduction system in the heart and send impulses through the AV node and into the ventricle every once in a while. So atrial fibrillation is irregularly irregular, but unlike ventricular fibrillation, it can conduct beats. So that's why I'm diagnosing this rhythm as AFib. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario now. So we're dispatched out for a pretty significant trauma. Pedestrian is struck in a busy intersection. The vehicle is moving approximately 35 miles per hour and our patient is lying supine on the street with obvious deformities to both lower extremities. The patient is unresponsive, apneic, and pulseless. Now, because of this additional information that I gathered from the scenario, I'm going to change my diagnosis slightly. So my final diagnosis for static cardiology is going to be atrial fibrillation, but PEA. Let's go ahead and now look at the treatment. Treatment of this patient is going to begin just like we begin all static cardiology cards by regurgitating the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IVO2 monitor. We'll then be doing cycles of CPR. And this of course is a compression to ventilation ratio of 30 to two. Because this is PEA, we'll be delivering epinephrine, one to 10,000, one milligram, every three to five minutes IV push. We'll be making sure we're switching out our providers of course, putting on maybe end tidal capnography, and trying to get a reading of 10 to assure good chest compressions, 
we'll be considering our H's and T's here, and it would be a good idea to kind of stick to like trauma-related H's and T's, like hypovolemia, tension pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade, that sort of thing, and then we'll consider an advanced airway. And then to keep yourself from rambling, you'll then say rapid transport. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more static cardiology. And remember, you can create your own playlists using my videos to make custom decks for you to practice with as you study for your own national registry exams. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.